How hilarious is it the fact that Kansas City cannot stop New England and then they hire the guy who was the defensive coordinator when they beat him in the 18 and 0 season? I know, right? You want another tidbit of information that's funny? Sure. Jacksonville is $3 million over the cap. You know how they could save $22 million? By cutting Blake Bortles? <laughs> no. No? No. Cutting Malik Jackson and Marcel Darius. Oh, man. What are they going to do inside? Cool. Didn't do much this year. <laughs> <laughs> time he's ever left a comment um yes, it wasn't an, it wasn't an official q a but it, these were just his thoughts and he brought up a really interesting point um where uh and i'll just read his comment and i'm sure mario will post it uh draft is full of tight ends get one there we have another episode this week already talking about that cut mccoy i mean we could talk all day about that uh draft a running back sign o-line from indy glowinski and and that's i think the most interesting the most interesting line of this because the Bills just hired Bobby Johnson as their offensive line coach. Told so you. OG it makes Bobby Johnson. O, OG Bobby Johnson. I don't Only a few of you will get that. I don't even know what that means. Okay. What is this from? I'm not even. I'm gonna let you look that up later. I'm not telling you. I'm gonna let the viewers tell you what it is. Yeah, please help me in the comment section. I'm not wasting the Google search on this. <laughs> I think it's an interesting point because when you start bringing in your position coaches mm -hmm. and you're hitting free agency, mm -hmm. especially at a position that the Bills are, they need, they they can't miss, they cannot miss. They missed, they missed this year. They rolled with what they could afford. They cannot afford to miss on offensive line again. You got a lot of money and the future invested in Josh Allen. You have to keep him upright. Mm -hmm. So you, you cannot you cannot screw up the offensive line this season. So. Uh, Glowinski from Indianapolis is right guard. Yep, right guard. Young is 26, mm -hmm. right? 26, 27. Yep. But he is an ideal piece to come in because even though Bobby Johnson was not the offensive line coach in Indianapolis, he, he wasn't. He was the assistant offensive line coach. You're still looking at bringing in somebody who already understands part of what that process is going to be like, mm -hmm. right? So, that's something that you and I, we look at it, we go, oh yeah, the move makes complete sense. Of course you would do that. Yeah. But, I think it's an underplayed uh, dynamic on the offensive line. Like, we see that with offensive coordinators. We're like, okay, they're going to bring in, you know, they're going to bring in this wide receiver because he played with them for six years and, you know, before. We, we see this with other positions, but we don't always see it with the position coaches. I think this is a great call out because it absolutely could happen. Yeah, if I could, if I can divert, once again, I see this in teaching a lot. I'll be teaching a point to my students, and sometimes a student sitting right next to them will be able to explain it if the student's really not getting what I'm saying. Right. Okay, even though I'll be explaining it, the student will be able to communicate that point better to the other student. Uh, you know, I, you know I, Granada told me before, here's what you got to do, blah, 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 and all this other stuff. That transferring over to the NFL game, that's it's it's so understand. It's like one of those little things, but it means so much to the team. Like the first year, McDermott got here, he brought over Leonard Johnson. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leonard Johnson, because McDermott coming from a def he was a defensive backs coach before he became a DC. So him realizing the importance of that position and how communication has to be on the back end, it was huge. So he brings in, he brings in Leonard Johnson. Why? Because they don't have coaches meetings all day. Right. They don't. So he's in the ear of those guys when the coaches aren't in session. Because hey, when they're walking to practice, they're walking back for hey, when you did that, you know, when that, when he calls this, what do we do? So that is constantly going on. And to have it not just be a tackle, but a guard, the guy who has to communicate to Bodine or Groy, well, if Groy's still here, Groy, 
and have that ultimate communication in the most important positions that have to be communicating right. is huge. Well, especially when you start looking at the right side of that line because, I mean, yeah. Well, they sign serials. Right. But I, you're not planning on him playing your right tackle position. I'm not. I'm just going on what we have now. I'm right. not. We can, we can speculate on what's going to happen, but we have talked that Mills and Miller are likely not going to be right. here. So yeah. you have Cyril's, who's probably your depth signing. You, well, I mean, he could play. He could swing. Glowinski so would be a depth signing. I, I mean, at this point, you could look at it that way. Yeah, even though he's young. He's a guy that would... Okay. But he's the guy that could be the one that communicates. What, I mean, Bodine got here when McCarron did for communication purposes. Right. So that see how aspect, well that works out. Uh, yeah, he's, he, he drove him to the airport. And, uh, <laughs> he, he got traded to Oakland. I think the fact still remains that, um, you know, when a position coach comes in and the head coach walks in and says, okay, what do you need? And that position coach goes, I, you know, I'm breaking down tape of what you guys had here last year. Because that's the first thing a position coach is going to do is say, okay, let me look at. Yeah. Who, who do I got? Who, what do I got? Who are you really keeping? Who are you thinking about keeping? And who are you? definitely moving on from and you kind of get that all laid out in your head what what if Johnson comes in and goes why isn't Dawkins a guard <laughs> <laughs> McDermott's gonna look at B uh, Dave will go oh crap. we knew this was coming you know what that's gonna be like if I if I see that story play out in the media someplace I'm gonna be like remember that uh, that that commercial from years and years and years ago it had to be almost 25 years ago where there was all the pollution and and, and the and the one native is on the on the shore and he's got the one tear coming out of the side of his eye that's gonna be me i'm just gonna be I'm like they finally see it they finally <laughs> see it i mean dawkins to me is a guard but i mean i support any move that gets dan dawkins to guard period the end um but i don't Glowinski doesn't get him to guard. But no, no, no. What I'm saying that is... That doesn't matter. If he comes into the room, he, like you say, he's reviewing tape. He's yeah. looking at what he has to work with now. Okay, wait. All right, here's what we got. Here's what we got. Here's what we got. Who are we... Th okay. Yeah, who do you... You know, who can really being, compete? Yeah, you know who yeah. can really compete for this job? Glowinski, the right guard. I, he's better than anything you've got right now. Yeah. Yep. Or just as good as everything you've got right now. Might as well, you but know... But I'd like to have him regardless because I think he was only like... He was less than two million against the cap. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which you're not worried about spending this year. Cheap. Yeah, I'm just saying. Care. Our natural instinct is to talk about how much guys cost cost against the cap because yeah. the Bills have always been within that range. Right. Like, oh, you got to make sure that you don't spend too much for this guy. Right. Even yeah. though, even though they're going to be throwing money. Get ready. They're overpaying for a lot of people this offseason. Oh yeah, don't that's happen. don't freak out yeah, about that's it. Happen. Yeah, that's that's not that's not even a question. That is a yes. Who are they overpaying for? Yes. Yep. I like Roger Saffold. You know he's got a pretty good offensive line coach out there. Aaron Cromer, former Buffalo Bill. It's so salty when we start talking about Aaron Cromer. It's so mad. Like you had you had to let him go. That was the one guy you had to let go. You kept Danny Crossman. Yeah, the let. But well, let's let Cromer go. There's days where I'm really salty where I should like start writing greeting cards. Happy belated birthday. Thought you were dead. <laughs> this gets so salty sometimes. Um let's just look at available. Oh, that's a line. You all right? I'm enjoying this. What? I'm enjoying this. I'm just staring at my phone. I'm not doing anything important. You are... I'm going to turn this off because you're heated enough. <laughs> you are so <laughs> mad right I, now. I know. I just... It pisses me off so much. Is that what so I look like when I, when I lose my... When you mention... <clears throat> the, when, when you say TB12... Do I, is that when I when I lose my mind? Yeah, 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 a my, little bit. My left eye starts twitching. Just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, Roger Saffold's a great signing. I it's, here's the thing, Wyatt Teller. That's a pipe dream for me. I know. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. Wyatt Teller was fine. He was fine. You got to have a look at him. Yeah, I mean, and to see 
I, I'm not I'm not earmarking Wyatt Teller as a starter. From the way that I saw the last four games of his season play, I'm not earmarking him as a starter. But you have a solid guy who could be who offers you depth if you go after someone else. Right. That's fine. Because yeah. you need that on the offensive line. My 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 if I had to rate Teller as a success versus a failure, I think it's a success because you had ample time to see him in multiple situations yep. with multiple quarterbacks. Right. And you can grade him out accordingly to what you, what you saw. Right. It's great. And you have him for the next three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So if we're looking at um, <clears throat> available tackles, there's another one. Jamarcus Webb played in Indy. He's 30. Again, it's another depth signing, but, I mean, he's, he's another guy that could come over from Indy. Uh, so if we start looking at tackles, um, it is it is terrifying. It is bad. I know they're bad. It's horrible. Bad. That's why you um, got to draft one. Jake Fisher, I like a lot out of Cincy, but he was hurt all last season. Um, so Jake Fisher, I like, but again, injury issues. Um, Jamarcus Webb, we just mentioned from Indy, but again, I wouldn't depend on him being your starting right tackle. Um, truthfully speaking, anybody who they sign, um, when you look at Jordan Mills, I mean, it's not much better. It really isn't. Jordan Mills is like, not all that bad compared to what's out there. Um, Marshall Newhouse is a free agent. You can stay free agent. It's bad. It's bad. So the you know saying that the Bills are going to go out and address you know the their offensive line and free agency with who? With who? Who who are you going to go get? You have to look because we do this in tiers. We always did it in tiers. There's better guards than there are tackles. I guess that's my point. True, there is. I mean, if you, right now on free agency, if you wanted to sign better guards than tackles, we can't do it now. No, yeah. Then it's you free wouldn't agency. have your role over and everything. Yeah. But when free agency starts, you can do that. The thing about it is that now you have to start looking at teams that are close to the cap numbers, that have high paying um, tackles mm-hmm. that are 28 or 29. Maybe 30. You got to think about that now because, you know, these teams are going to listen. They see what we see. Very defensive heavy draft. There could be some tackles that fall to us that are cheaper than what we have. We can plug in. They can do the job. And we won't have to worry about paying them for about five years because our cap numbers are, are in trouble. They'll be better in five years from now. Okay? So you start looking at guys that are in the 29 to 32 range in age that are costing – over, I want to say $8 million uh-huh. against the 2019 cap. Now, that's not saying that, okay, if, if you cut them and then a dead money bomb goes off of $9 million, you don't want to do that, obviously. Those guys are going to stay. Uh, they may get restructured. That's another right. thing that may happen. So you want to look at guys that will offer a cap savings to these teams that are 29 to 32 and uh, because that's what's going to happen. That's definitely going to happen. Those are tackles that you're going to look at. So if we take a look at highest paid tackles in 2019, and we look at teams that are in a, who are in a bad spot. Who is the highest paid tackle? Taylor Lewan. Accordingly. Which is perfectly fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's perfectly fine with me. Oh, memory. Let's get so salty. Why are we talking about things that I hate? I didn't even try to. The 2014 draft, let's just bring that up again. Don't kick my dog while you're here, oh idiots. <laughs> <laughs> the Giants. You think the Giants need to pay $15.5 million to Nate Solder for any reason? Probably not. Right? Nope, I don't want him. No? Nope. Why, former Patriot? Are you serious? We're going to go down this road? Willingly let go. By Belichick, but he he literally fits your profile. An overpaid tackle. He's thirty. Damn it! He literally fits everything that you talk about. Yeah, because Belichick won't know how to beat him on the outside rushing. <laughs> but it's also going back to an episode from last week. You already have the relationship established between Bean and Gettleman. Like the road is already there. He's overpaid. The Giants are in a horrible spot. They are bad. They are bad. There's 
no reason to pay Nate Solder. No reason. Move on. Move on. <laughs> it's going to cost them $12 million to trade him. That's the thing that gets me a little bit. It's basically a wash if they trade him. <laughs> basically a wash. Dodge that bullet. Um, yeah. But I mean for a pick. You throw him a, throw him a third round pick for him. He's yours, and they're fine because they could they could draft and tackle in the third round. I mean, that's that, that's fine. Oh, wait, what are the Giants on the hook for? They trade him. The Giants are on the hook for twelve, and he costs fifteen against the cap. It costs seventeen against the cap, so Ooh. it's it's close. They get a little. Yeah, bit. you're keeping him for five mil. You think so? Yeah, I think you do. They're not in cap jail. They're not in your cap jail. They're under thirty. I think I think you do what you gotta do. Nate Solder makes a lot of sense because the rest of the tackles of the free agency class are horrible, bad, yeah, very bad. He said not the good. No bueno. He said not the good. Okay, so what did we decide in this episode? No, no, Superman is not here. No. I think we started with OG Bobby Johnson and talking about he's gonna bring some guys over from Indy, which makes sense. So. Not necessarily, kind of like the. I'm going to equate it to the feeling people got when Newhouse and Bodine came here. You know what I mean? Everyone yeah. thought that they were going to be just, oh, it's okay, they brought these guys in. A lot of people were indifferent about it because right. not a lot of, you know, not a lot of people knew about Newhouse and Bodine. Oh, right. There's depth signings. Glowinski, that's his name? Yep. If he comes here, he's going to be a depth signing. And a guy who's going to communicate across the board. Mm. Bye. Period. In the end.